Welcome back to another Build Day Live video here at Cohesity. It's a great pleasure to, for me to welcome one of my friends from the community to join us. Uh, Teresa Miller, what's your role with Cohesity? My role um, when I joined Cohesity is principal technologist. So I get out and do some of this externally facing, um, customer facing um, advocacy for the team. And one of the videos that I made recently, I, I referenced your uh, your own writing about, I think it was Office 365 protection that I uh, was reading one of your articles on. Uh, can we talk a little bit about how customers are finding they need to back up more things than they might have previously backed up? Yeah, I think that's a really great question. Um, the interesting conversation in terms of Office 365, the Exchange Online piece specifically, Microsoft's done a lot to do forms of data protection within the platform. So for example, minimally you have about 30 days of recovery on a mailbox. And then if you go to deleted item recovery, you can go out from the 14 day default to 30. So that's some of the, the basic protection that you get. Going um, over and above that, customers can do some legal hold or even retention policy. And I think that works well for a lot of people, but the challenge actually becomes that getting the data out takes a lot of time. The searches only go to PST files and um, sometimes those searches even fail and they have to start over. So there's not a ton of control over ERPOs uh, and RTOs when it comes to what's offered natively in the product. And that's, there's quite a perception that if it's in the cloud, it's all somebody else's problem, but I don't need to think about protection. And it seems that there's adequate data protection for the immediate, somebody did something stupid and we need to get back that mail message they shouldn't have deleted. That, that seems to be fairly well covered, but not all of the compliance and legal risk element that's fairly significant when you start thinking beyond uh, one of my staff have, has done something stupid this week. Uh, that's where you see there being value in, in having these products and, and having particularly the, the integration with Office 365 and Cohesity? So it's a great question. The protection piece is, to me, it's twofold. So one piece of it is you get a lot of high availability out of the product, but like you said, it doesn't protect you from what the end user does to the data. But the other piece to that is even the things that you you have less control over so mailbox ransomware for example if a user gets an email message that takes them to a link that all of a sudden hijacks their mailbox and they have to pay a fine or a fee to get out of it if you had the right backup and protection solution in place you wouldn't have to go back and and pay that fine so in terms of customer data protecting that data is up to them the way I like to look at it is when you're, when you were on-prem with your data exchange, for example, you would have backed it up because you don't know what you, you know, could happen. So in the cloud, it shouldn't be any different. Your data is your data. Treat it with the same level of respect that you would have on-prem, just so that you're prepared for any of those unexpected situations. And in some cases, you could even think of it as an insurance policy beyond the insurance policy, you're gonna have better control though over how fast you get that data back. It's gonna be much harder if you use just like the native tools that just take a lot more time. So sp speed of recovery and, and that other element is that you, you can't outsource risk. You, you've got to own the, the risk on your own data. Microsoft's not going to go out of business if you lose data out of, your, out of your exchange environment, out of your Office 365 environment. It's your organization that goes out of business, so you're the one that, that risk can say, you, you must do that yeah. due diligence to protect yourself from that risk. Exactly. Are there other data platforms, that, or, or I shouldn't say data platforms, are there other data locations that you think customers need to be considering more deeply than they possibly have been? Yeah, I think from the virtual machine perspective, so since we're talking Microsoft, let's talk a little bit about Azure. So when it comes to Azure virtual machines, by default, if the customer didn't make any changes, that, that system's not backed up. 
And one exception I can call out to that though is from my real world experience, I actually had a virtual machine that was corrupted from Windows updates. And through a support ticket, there were some backdoor ways that Microsoft was able to employ to be able to get that machine back. Now, that being said, it, it was a production system and it took more than 24 hours. So there's that, well, how fast do you want your production system back online? I think it's wonderful that even without taking the step of the backup, they were, that the data could come back, but it was just, it was such a slow process. So backing up virtual machines is important. Yeah, and I, it's, it seems universal for cloud providers that the virtual machine services don't include backup initially, partly because the philosophy is cloud native applications, your virtual machine is, is a disposable resource and that you, you protect the way that you create that virtual machine, but not the virtual machine itself. And I, I think that's not necessarily the way people are actually using public cloud, or at least not universally. There's definitely times when uh, it's, it's unique data is being created in these, these EC2 instances and, and Azure VMs and other platforms. So, Teresa, thank you very much for spending a few minutes talking with, some, uh, talking with me about some of these other sources of data that needs to be protected. Uh, please stay tuned for more Build Day Live videos here with Cohesity. We'll have lots more great content coming out. And thank you very much, Teresa.